In this short video, we're going to take a look at the hip flexor and hip extensor muscles. These are very key muscles for sprinting and jumping, but they're often neglected. The hip flexor muscles work around the ball and socket joint of the hip, and together with numerous ligaments and tendons, they contribute to lifting the thigh up. The hip extensors, on the other hand, play a vital role in pushing the leg down towards the ground. Sprinting requires the legs to move from a position behind the body to one in front as quickly as possible. A great deal of research exists that shows that the hip flexors are perhaps one of the most vital muscles when it comes to sprinting and indeed jumping, yet these muscles are often overlooked in training, particularly in the weights room where there's a greater emphasis on the thighs and the glute muscles. These still shots or Sarah sprinting with the arrows will indicate clearly how and where the hip flexor and hip extensor muscles work when sprinting. I've always included hip flexor and hip extensor training in the athletes I coach and indeed when I was an athlete I regularly performed hip flexor and hip extensor exercises. And it's probably because of that that I'm still able to perform some quite difficult exercises from the high bar. The hips are very much the pivot point of the running action and indeed, as we'll see later, the long jump takeoff. So it pays to really focus on developing their power. So how can you target these muscles in training? Well, the leg cycling on the spot drill that you're seeing at the moment is one way. Key technique points here are to pull the heel up to the bottom and pull the foot over the knee during the cycle whilst getting the foot quickly down to the track surface. The muscles of the hip are also important at the long jump and triple jump takeoff in particular where the hip must be driven forwards and away from the jumper. So what exercises can you do to improve the drive of your hip? Well these skipping drills can have an important role in this respect. And potentially more unusually, you can use medicine balls and specific hip drive exercises. With these exercises, it's crucial that you focus on the movement of the hip, driving it as explosively away from the body as you can. With the medicine ball exercise, you need to hold the ball against your thigh before projecting it and your hip forwards. I reacquainted myself with some of my old school coaching manuals from over 20 years ago to come up with some of these exercises, or rather to reuse them. They're great for the hips and also the lower abs, but this one only lightly grab the box behind you. Here's an alternative using two plyometric platforms. Try to lift the hips up and the thighs so that they're parallel to the ground. With this one, it's a case of switching the legs back and forth. And here we have a leg cycling option. All these exercises and more can be performed from a high bar and they're usually, depending on your particular abdominal and hip flexor extensor strength, more difficult. There are also weight training exercises that you can utilise, such as the deadlift variations, which really target the hip muscles. And here's a great exercise for the glutes and hamstrings, and of course, the lower back. These exercises, however, won't provide you with the velocity that you need. So I like to combine them with the various exercises that you're seeing now, which are much more explosive in nature. There are, of course, numerous sprint drills and takeoff drills that really focus effort onto the hip region. Finally, a little bit of comment on the hamstrings. It appears from research that the speediest of sprinters are those that can get their feet more quickly and therefore more powerfully down to the track surface. As usual, thanks for listening and good luck with your training and competition. And do subscribe to the channel and leave any comments you may have in the section below.